Alfarius in the Horus Heresy book, by the same name, claims to have been the first Primarch recovered by his father, the Emperor of Mankind, and on Terra itself, no less. So does this position truly make him the Alpha Primarch, and does the name of the Alpha Legion betray this plot line was an arc that was always known within the lore writers, the Games Workshop, and the Black Library? In today's episode, we have myself, John, joined by Tom and Adam. Tom's going to take the pro stance, so we'll begin with you. This is kind of a difficult question to tackle because you're talking about the intent of a writing team that's probably changed hands for about, you know, 10, 15 years, maybe altered direction based upon what the game was doing, what popular interest was kind of guiding and leading towards. Um, So I'll be perfectly honest and say that whether it was an intention all along of the writing team, I think that maybe... Uh, well, we may never know. In typical Alpha Legion fashion, we may never know the truth. That said, I think that the storyline behind the Alpharius book uh, actually lends itself to the idea that, yes, we can all make the joke that Alpharius is telling the story. Is it true? But so much of it is tied so very well together and gives us so much of a deeper understanding of all of the other events that have happened that it kind of it you can't help but believe it you can't help but think that this is actually what happened and from there i would argue that it is in fact the case that his event uh his retelling of the events of his finding of his being part of his father's crusade from the beginning um from the nascent stages of finding the primarchs to the full-fledged um i believe is true okay adam it's up to you Coming from a, a, a gamer that's been playing these games workshop games for a long time, it, it's a different. Uh, I have a different, slightly different trick, only because I know a lot, and most older gamers do that have been playing the game for a long time know a lot more of the backstory, and it kind of goes into almost the origins of the game itself, especially during second edition, which I mentioned before, which coalesces a lot of the the, the stories that we know today and that they retold. Uh, they gave us they gave us the eighteen legions. Uh, they gave us the names for all of them. Now, the last legion was called Alpha Legion. I I don't know if, to be honest, I don't know if that was like a joke with the last be- legion being called the first with the word with the name Alpha. At the time, there was only the one Alpharius, and nothing was ever hinted about. Th- they hinted that it was actually the last founding, which may have been part of the joke in calling them the Alpha Legion. Now. In the past, the first the first legion found was actually the Dark Angels, which were which is why they were the first legion. But that has since changed. It's changed twice apparently now. Since then, they made, said that Horus was found first, and now with the recent book, they're saying that Alpha Legion was found first. Uh, in terms of believability, it's hard to say. Uh, the whole purpose of Alpha Legion is deceit. So it's hard to tell when someone who constantly lies is telling the truth. It's almost like the boy who cried wolf. You know, if you're constantly saying, you know, this, 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 it always turns out to be a lie. And you're now you're trying to tell us the truth. How are we, how are we supposed to believe you? And I think that's, that's the purpose of the book itself. I, per, I maybe because I know a lot more of the past, don't really believe it too much, uh, much like anything else in the history of the Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, Warhammer 30k. It's told from different perspectives, and they have a different take on what "quote unquote" the truth is. And I, I think, I think it's a truth to Alpharius and to the Alpha Legion, but I don't know if it's the actual truth. Much like how the the Primarchs think of the Emperor as their father, but as far as I can tell, they ne- the Emperor has never called them his sons, or the. the single Primarch, their son. He never looked at him that way. He always looked at him as, he always called them by their legion number, especially if you read uh, Master of Mankind. So f- for me, it, that makes it a little more difficult to take any truth in the story about the Alpha Legion. Uh, and like I said, a, a, it's hard to say whether the writers always in, uh, intended that, especially writers from like the late 80s, early 90s when all of this was, was formed. And to be honest, I, I don't even think they thought that far ahead. You know, I th- I think they were, you know, I th- as we've seen, they kind of, 
it seemed early on anyway that they make the fluff up along as they go along and then kind of adjust it years years later. So I think that's what the case with this is. But that being said, it is the Alpha Legion. Deceit is their MO. So I'm, I'm one to question uh, whether it's the truth or not. Yeah, it's an interesting point to bring up the idea that like the original lore writers were very tongue in cheek about things. So you could argue that they might have made the Alpha Legion be the last Legion, <laughs> just just trying to be funny. And then when you start to add in like the Omegon reveal, right? So you have the the, the twin Primarchs are the first and the last. Right, and then well, is this story just trying to show that like, well, the first Primarch found his twin, then gets to be the last Primarch, Primarch found, and ha ha, his name is Omegon. Like, is is all of that an homage to that early tongue in cheek approach to the literature and the fluff, or is it something that when they started the Horus Heresy series, they probably like solidified on? So like. It seems like the fluff really solidified in the universe when they decided to do the Horus Heresy series, right? So they decided to do that series of books. And for the first time, they're going to go back and tell those real origin stories. And you're actually going to see the Emperor and you're actually going to interact with the Primarchs. And so let's sit down and actually figure out these things. Um. And that's the reason why I think that the Alfarius book is telling you, like, the truth. I think it's so funny, like, haha, you don't know if this is true because Alpha Legion, LOL. But, like, I think it's, it's probably true in that the other things that go along with the story are pretty um, convincing as being things that, like, you could see as being true. Like... Also, the fact that Alpharius can, like, sneak himself into places easier because he's not the size of a Primarch. He's more the size of, like, a large Legionary um, and things like that come through in that novel pretty cool and pretty well. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think that maybe saying it was always the intent originally is probably incorrect because those original lore writers, especially, like, you were saying, Adam, in 2nd edition and then, like, 3rd edition – were very tongue in cheek still until they did that original, like Horus Heresy's collected visions, which I think that was fourth between third and fourth, Adam, something like that. It was, it was, it was after it was during the saber tooth card game. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. Uh, when saber tooth uh, mm-hmm. put out the Horus Heresy uh, collectible card game, which had a lot of the images that were in that, um, uh, in the uh, visions yeah. book. And gave us things like Sisters of Silence, because before we didn't even have Sisters of Silence. Right. Then. And they actually like talked more about the custodes and stuff, too, in that book. So I think it, you you might be able to say that around that time is when they start to get, like, quote unquote, serious about the fluff. But I would think that the Alpha Legion storyline is probably one of the lesser fleshed out ones prior to the actual Horus Heresy book series starting. Um, but I, I kind of have to agree. I think that, like, the fact they called him Alfarius may have started as a joke. Like I agree with Adam that that's probably like a tongue in cheek thing. But then I think once they started the Horus Heresy series, they decided to run with it and be like, okay, so it's funny. He's named Alfarius in his last. So let's actually make him the first. But then I don't know where they're going with that. You know? Yeah. I, I think those are great points. Um, and so I think, the one thing that we can look to is the story itself it, within the context of the lore that we do know um, and establish just in universe, right? You know, going, going kind of more specific into the material, kind of going outside of the meta of what the writers were thinking. Is this a true story? And I think there's two key components to the Alfarius recounting, actually three, um, that um, really seem to indicate that what he's telling is the truth. Um, the first is his uh, interaction with the Adeptus Custodes, and um, specifically how he inadvertently invented the Blood Games by sneaking in and basically getting into kill range because when he was discovered, Malkador and the Emperor had no idea what happened. 
they just knew that all the Primarchs had disappeared. And so to them, they basically, being the generals that they were, the tacticians that they were, said, we got this one guy, this is all we got, the others are lost. And so what what we throughout the entire Horus Heresy see as this cudgel or this sword or this like figurehead of destruction that like these Primarchs ended up being these symbolic figureheads of, all they had was a single Primarch that that's all they had left. They didn't know if they were going to get anybody else. So therefore, that became their most precious resource. They had to protect him, keep him in hiding, keep him in secret. And that's how Afarius talks about it. He talks about being in secret, being being a silent um, a silent arbiter of what's happening and figuring out what needs to be done, a hidden general, um, which not only ended up molding his warfare style, but it also ended up... Um, just, I mean, it just kind of makes sense, right? If you only got one Primarch, you're going to make sure you do everything to protect him. Um, I mean, ignoring Gilliman in the 40K universe, apparently, to be a little be a little jokey about that. But when you look at what he did with the in- infiltration of the Custodes, you, it kind of, you kind of start realizing that that's something that the Adeptus Custodes didn't and couldn't think of to think to do on their own. Um, they were so rigid in their approach and application of their duties that something like the blood games. And I even remember kind of thinking this, like that, that was one of the cooler things. I was like, Oh, well they're like, they're talked about as these like, um, Mm -hmm. you know, custodians of who just sit there and guard things. And even though they're they're these peerless warriors. So how did they think to do that if they've never left? And it Mm -hmm. was the, it was an Alfarius who basically said, I didn't have to pull a trigger, and I got to I got to uh, Valoris, and 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 you know, sure, your blade's at my neck, but the entire orbital battery surrounding you is pointing at you. You know, I don't mind if I die, and that I think th- then realized that became part of their purview is to test their security in even the most subtle of ways. Um, so I, I think that's the first major point. The second major point, and it's a briefer one, is that there's a recounting of the Alpha Legion interacting with Lionel Johnson. That was originally a short story written about, I think, four years ago. And Alpharius tells, retells this entire story from the Legionnaire's perspective, not the Lion's perspective, which is what the other story is written in. And in that story, you kind of get the feeling that, wait, is he actually talking to Alpharius? In this story, you know it's Alpharius talking to him as a Legionnaire. And you end up realizing that it ha- he has his own reasons for just all of a sudden showing up in the field of war. Um, but the conversation is word for word the exact same, which is fascinating. Um, and it's a complete like, retelling of what had happened. The third and final thing, I think, is that the key difference between Alpharius and Omegon, while Alpharius was found first and that Omegon was found second, is Alpharius knew the emperor and knew the emperor pretty well. Omegon, they decided together to keep a secret from the emperor until the emperor himself mentioned it, which, of course, I'm sure he probably knew. Um, If he ever was in Alpharius' presence, he would just instantly know like that, reading his mind or something like that. But what's fascinating is that Omegon, not Alpharius, Omegon is the one who sneaks aboard the vengeful spirit and meets Horus. And I think that's pretty telling because when, as we know, the Alpha Legion was a false flag under the banner of Horus in order to save humanity. But I think had Alpharius not died on Pluto, which is another topic, um, we could have seen what would have happened had the Horus, the heresy failed. And quite honestly, if Alpharius was still around, it could have been an, an action or an order of, Hey, we tried taking them out from the inside in. Let's go to Malkador at a, gun safe distance and tell everything about what happened or to whomever is in charge of the Imperium now and and let them know and our ships are yours to command. But that didn't happen because Alpharius died. And instead you had Omegon who now led the Legion and continued on in that vein. But I think the fact that he had his first imprint or impression, if you will, from Horus instead of the Emperor is why we see the Alpha Legion more often than not in actual full chaos mode, actual full um, degradation, trying to destroy the Imperium, but now their reasons are completely altered. Um, They're not doing it to save the Emperor. They're not doing it to save the Imperium. They're actually doing it because now they're just like any renegade warband. And um, 
I think that's because of Omegon's leanings. I think of the two Primarchs, and it would be fitting that one lent, one leaned Imperial and one leaned, uh, you know, heretical. That um, Omegon was the heretic between the two. I like the second point in that the Dark Angels short story, right, that you brought up, um, is told almost word for word again, but f- with Alpharius being the Alpha Legionnaire that meets Lionel Johnson, right, without Lionel Johnson knowing. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I was convinced that that story was like a real story. And that at the very least, that portion of it is true. That Alpharius is first, found first at least, and then he's kept secret on purpose. And that kind of corroborates that part of it. Now, the rest of it, I don't know. Um, But yeah, the custodes are definitely not hmm, creative enough to come up with the blood games on their own. I always assumed it was something they were told to do by somebody else. Like I always assumed the blood games were something the emperor told them to do or Malkador told them to do. Right. Like I even reading that originally about the blood games in the earlier novels, I never thought that was something that they, I, I literally assumed somebody else told them to do it. Like, I just figured it was something the Emperor said, you have to try to kill me as part of a way of making sure that I can survive. Or Malkador and and the two of them. Um, So that backstory for that is really interesting. I don't know if that makes me believe that book is any more true or not. um, Or if it helps me believe that Alpharius was the Alpha anymore or not. But the Dark Angels one definitely does. His interactions with Lionel Johnson being so similar to the other story, that's what makes me think for sure that book is telling at least a semblance of the truth, even if it's a LOL, Alfarious, who knows what's going on book, you know, to a certain extent. Well, even uh, even the, be- the best lies have a kernel of truth in them. So I would expect some parts of the books to be true, but maybe not all of it. I mean, any one of the primarchs could have claimed to be to have been found first, especially if they're there before all the other ones. And with Alpha Legion, they could because of their very nature, they could easily just say, "Oh yeah, we were the first ones. We just were sneaky enough. You never knew." With no way to prove or disprove it. In regards to the Omegon, his attitude. There's a short story in one of the later books. I can't remember the title of the book, where he goes on a special mission. Uh, with some other Alpha Legionnaires to destroy an outpost, which is another Alpha Legion outpost. <laughs> so, um, and it's essentially a, a, a suicide, uh, more or less a suicide mission. Um, there's a lot to it. But in the end, there's a moment where he's talking to Alpharius and he more or less questions what they're doing, basically working for horror. So I don't know where each other each other's leanings actually lie in regards to the Horus heresy. So I don't know if Omegon is... If they're both on the same page, I know Omegon, at least in this particular short story, has some misgivings about following the plan of being on Horus's side, if anyone who's read Legion knows. Um, so I, I'm in that respect, I'm curious as what what happens going forward. Um, if you haven't read the Siege of Terror books, I suggest you do. <laughs> I won't give up much more than that. But um, yeah, I, th- I think that in regards to the Alpha Legion in general, it, I mean, like I said, it's it's easy for anybody to claim to be the first, especially if there's no way to prove it. Because you can just play it off as, well, we're just super sneaky, so that's why you never noticed before. But they are the only one that that fits with, right? Like the Alpha Legion and Alpharius are the only ones that that fits the personality, the character, the Legion... Like, I mean, maybe Lionel Johnson could could try to pull it off because he's very secretive. He's got that dark secret, you know, like in the poem. <laughs> yes. And then um, maybe the the Night Hunter, Night Hunter, Night Hunter. Um, yeah, I could maybe see him trying it too. But I think for the most part, it really only works for. Alfarius. The only other one I might buy it for, honestly, would be the lion. But the lion was already like, I'm the lord of this whole freaking planet. And that's the other problem with all the Primarchs. All of them are like already the lords of their planets, right? Well, except for 
except for two of them. Mortarian and Angron, who were little bitches who needed dad's help to help them out. (laughs) Right? (laughs) 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 Mortarian and Angron, they needed dad to come save the day and help them. And then that would create more daddy issues. Um, I think that uh, the other ones are too, like, already well established on their Mm -hmm. worlds to be able to be like, no, we, we, we were secret. So it fits with the Alpha Legion because we don't learn about how they're found. In fact, I don't remember ever hearing about how they're found until that book talks about Omegon finding his way onto the Bridge of the Vengeful Spirit. Right? Like, I don't think in the fluff they ever talk at all about how Alpharius and the Alpha Legion are, like, created and how the Primarch is found, other than he's last. They summarize the story of Alpharius, not knowing it was Omegon, but they summarize in a late in one of the one of the Horus Heresy books that uh, Horus is the one who discovered Alpharius and knew that this armored warrior who snuck onto his ship passed all of his armored legionnaires and was bearing like 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 uh, ancient Volkite weaponry was his brother. He just knew instantly, and they said they kind of summarized that. Um, was that but in Legion? I don't remember what that was in. It might have been in Legion. It might have been in one of the earlier heresy books where the 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 Alpha Legion played more of a role than just being there. Um, and I think the other thing, too, is that one of the things to remember is that this book feels more like a confession than it feels like a look at, look at us, look at us, Grandstand, we're the first, haha. Like, it's not this... It's not this boastful thing. It's just it feels more like a recounting, like a like a telling of what happened. Um, and I think to that end, um, if we're to believe the Soto Voce of Alfarius, yes, he's a liar. Maybe he does still have a reason to to not tell the whole truth here, even in his confession. But the fact that I feel like it isn't a confession makes it a bit different than coming out and saying we're the first, we're the best. Um, Additionally, too, I think that something else kind of came up. You know, e- we talked about each each legion having its role and having um, its destiny of what it was good at and what it was meant to do, what problems it was kind of meant to solve. And while in a different book, uh, Alpharius and Omegon expand on that, and we'll talk about that another time, I think. Um, Alpharius in this book says that his goal once was originally just to survive. And then once they started finding Primarchs, he was the vet of that Primarch. And he would hide in that legion for several months before being naturally transferred out for whatever reason due to the demands of war. But he basically monitored, monitored each of the Primarchs. And funny enough, he says the only one who ever suspected that he was being watched was the lion. The lion is the only one who always knew that something was wrong but couldn't put his finger on it. Everyone else kind of just thought that they were surrounded by their new legion. And his whole his whole shtick was to make sure that the new Primarchs, that they were up to snuff. Which, if you think about it, kind of makes sense for what we also know in the lore. We do know of two legions that didn't make it for whatever reason. And the Executioner Legion, the Space Wolves... You know, mm-hmm. when, you know, they're revealed to be the actual emperor's execution of his own forces. Who's going to who's going to serve that onto a plate for them? Right. Because if either of those legions led by Primarchs realized that what they were doing was tantamount enough for them to be executed and their legion either annihilated or dispersed. I mean, they're Primarchs, even if they're unstable. I mean, Night Hunter got as unstable as it got, <laughs> and that guy was still brilliant beyond any of us yeah i don't know how that got me through the vetting process i I think it was because he didn't he hadn't quite lost his mind and the visions hadn't started taking place yet uh same with alfair or same with sanguinius right sanguinius didn't start having visions until much much later um when the threat when the threads of fate started narrowing in terms of what was going to happen but um uh i think with alfarius he was able to basically look at those two primarchs and without them realizing they were being watched, he kind of could have said, like, oh, crud, these guys ain't good. I need to tell I need to tell Macklador that 
something's got to give here. And mm -hmm. seeing as that Russ was the second or technically third Primark found, that role would have been able to be fulfilled pretty quickly. Yeah, I can see that. Well, and Russ also clearly works with the custodes often. So that makes sense also in, in the fluff. Yeah. Um, yeah, the lion being <clears throat> the only one Alpharius was like knew something was up. And then the other one was he was glad he wasn't there for Angron. Right. That's like, right. In the, yeah. in the story, he specifically says, I've seen Angron, but thank God I wasn't there when they found him. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was always a funny moment for me, too. All right, uh, let's get last thoughts. Adam, since Tom went with the initial thoughts, let's go with your last thoughts. Um, although, although, like you guys said before, that they're trained to be uh, covert and things like that, I think that actually helps my argument in that that explains why that they may not be telling the truth. It's so ingrained in them, they may not know how, or they only tell half-truths. Like I said... Colonel, all you need all you need for a good lie is a kernel of truth. So I would accept part of the books being true and part of it's being fabrication. And it's easy for them to easily say we were the first because there's no way to prove that they weren't. You know, it's like trying to prove a negative. You know, don't mm -hmm. you know so so I mean that's more or less where my argument lies. Okay. I think I think ultimately that is the that is the sad reality of this book. I mean, for anyone who's listened to me on other podcasts know knows that I'm a huge fan of the Alpha Legion. So of course I'm gonna take the side that makes them cooler or have more of a richer, deeper storyline. But ultimately that is kind of the problem, as Adam's pointing out, with who they are, right? Um, you know, and I can bring up all these tie ins and everything, but I'm also I'm also screwing myself over. I mean, without you know putting a point blank, because I'm talking about a Primarch who lies for a living. So that guy is, can can if anything, that guy can write history backwards better than anybody else. So ultimately, I think actually just from a fan perspective, I think the way Adam put it was actually really great. It's that there's parts of it that are true, but the but the great debate is what parts are true. Is it all the parts? Is it some of the parts? Is it none of the parts? And I think ultimately that's one of the best parts, not to pun it, of that book is that it does kind of give you that fun thing to argue about, right? And of course, you can take it completely too seriously. It is Warhammer after all. But I think that's one of the great things about the book. You can just look at it and say, I liked this book and I, I can take pieces of it and I can not ignore pieces of it. And ultimately you're doing so either way is canon. Yeah. I think I kind of fall somewhere in between too. Like I think that I don't believe that the original intent when they created the alpha legion and the character of Alfarius way back when was that he would be the first, but nobody would know it kind of thing. I think it was more tongue in cheek, but that I, I feel like that story that we're, we've been discussing is more true than not because they made the conscious decision to make it. So, and I feel another part of that conscious decision, was that short story um, because they talk a lot, the writers, especially they've said things on Twitter and stuff that like, you know, they have big meetings where they really hash all that stuff out and talk about it. And so I don't think that like that would have been just like shoehorned in. I think that that would have been something that was a conscious decision on their part. So maybe as early as the second round of Horus Heresy stuff that they were figuring out, maybe when they got to Siege of Terror or when they started the Primarch series, um, whenever they hashed that out, maybe. But I don't think from the beginning, Alpharius was like the guy who was found first. And let's just say he wasn't kind of thing. Um, it was definitely, I think, more tongue in cheek, um, which I think a lot of people also thought when they found out about Omegon. Like I think a lot of people found out about Omegon in uh in Legion were like, oh ha, very funny. First and last, ha ha. Right. Um so maybe they just decided to lean into that. I don't know. Um, but either way, I think it's a really good and compelling storyline. Um, I'm not a huge Alpha Legion fanboy. Um I, I do but I find this part of that storyline very interesting to follow and to read up on and to think about and ruminate because a lot of the Primarchs fall into the, the problem of they're two-dimensional, 
right? They, you have the, okay, the lion has his secrets. Gilliman's the great administrator. Dorn, you know, builds his sandcastles and such. But like <clears throat> Alpharius and Omegon are, are multi-layered, which always makes for a better character. I pref- I, I prefer the term uh, fan, not fanboy. Thank you. Okay, so we'd like to thank you for joining us on this latest episode of Pod Save the Imperium. If you enjoy good 40K content and you'd like to play the game, then we suggest you check out our other podcast, TFG Radio. If you are a fan of uh, Age of Sigmar, there's a great one party at the All Points that we'd like you to check out. They are Canadian, so it's a very nice podcast. It's very polite. And uh, they go into Age of Sigmar quite a bit. And then the last one is the Flying Monkey podcast. Um, That one is a little rougher around the edges. So if you don't like bad language or (laughs) topics that are more um, fringe for 40K, don't give that one a listen. But otherwise, you should definitely check those all out because they are fun. Uh, And if you liked this one, you probably like fun.